One of the countries that you will hear us talking about frequently here at Nomad Capitalist is definitely Mexico. So if you're somebody who's looking for a Mexican residence, whether for uh, lifestyle purposes, uh, for a second base, uh, for having a plan B residence that you can go to, go somewhere kind of quick and easy, not far away from your home, and you're interested in exploring Mexican residence for that purpose, uh, then this video definitely might be uh, useful to you. My name is Yelena, I'm a strategy manager here at Nomad Capitalist, and we help seven and eight figure entrepreneurs go where they're treated best. Now, when we're talking about a Mexican residence, there are definitely different ways that you can obtain it, and it depends on what you're trying to achieve as well, and what your personal situation is, and even uh, it depends on your age. So one of the most basic residencies is temporary residence through self-sufficient means. So for this temporary residence, which is a self-sufficient one, you have basically two ways to obtain it. The first one is that you will show proof of income. Uh, and the second one is that you will show proof of savings. If you're going the route of income, you will have to show that you have at least 3,000 US dollars uh, of income uh, that you have received constantly for the past six months. If you're going the route of savings, in that case, you would have to show proof that you have at least 55,000 uh, US dollars in your bank account for the past 12 months. Now, these amounts might slightly change and, and vary depending, first of all, on which embassy or consulate you apply in. Um, so every embassy or consulate has their own kind of numbers. Uh, it can go a bit uh, slightly, uh, be more than 3,000 or slightly less, depending on, uh, on the exact embassy or consulate. Then the next thing to take into consideration is also how many people are coming with you as dependents. For each dependent, you would have to show additional uh, proof of income or more savings in order for them to qualify as your dependents. Now, the second option is the permanent residence. Now, this permanent residence is available only to retirees. And here you also have two options, show proof of income or show proof of savings. However, in this case, because it's permanent residence um, and it gives you more benefits in that sense, uh, you have higher requirements. So you would either have to show proof of about 5,000 US dollars in income for the past six months, or you would need to show proof of approximately 220,000 US dollars in savings for the past 12 months. Now here, again, numbers can slightly change depending on the embassy, depending on the number of dependents that you are bringing with you to Mexico. The last option of obtaining a uh, residence in Mexico that is available is through real estate. Now this option is definitely not our favorite one because the requirement is very high. You would have to purchase a property that is valued at 430,000 US dollars, which obviously for Mexico can be quite, um, quite a high number. Uh, but also in addition to that, in this situation, your residence is then tied to that property. So if you were to sell it, you would have to rebuy another one so you can not get rid of it, so to say, uh, if you wanna keep your residence permit as opposed to the self-sufficient one, which uh, you would just have to renew and at every renewal, you would have to show proof that you still have that income or that savings and it's simple as that. Now, once you've chosen which route you wanna take, whether that's temporary residence uh, through self-sufficient means, permanent residence through self-sufficient means or through real estate, the next step is the process itself. The process itself is definitely easier than in some other countries, but there are quite a few steps that you need to take and quite a few documents that you need to collect in order to apply for the residence and then get it. One of the most surprising things that people find uh, when they start working with us is that in order to obtain the Mexican residence and apply for it, actually the process starts in your place of residence, so your place of legal residence. So the first step would be locating a Mexican embassy or consulate in your place of residence, making an appointment there, collecting all the documents, and getting the, uh, going there to get your visa sticker in your passport. Now, once you go to that appointment, uh, there's usually kind of a small interview there uh, where they will ask you, what are your intentions? Uh, in, what do you plan on doing in Mexico? Make sure that you understand how the process works and make sure that you understand that under the self-sufficient visa, you cannot work in Mexico legally. At that point, they will also take your photograph, they will take your fingerprints, and in some consulates, you will get the visa sticker immediately, and then in some others, you will actually have to wait uh, anywhere from one to 10 days. The good news is that when you get the visa sticker, you have 180 days to go to Mexico and finalize the process. So you still have some time if you are not ready to travel immediately, if you uh, have some obligations, or you don't wanna start that process immediately. After getting the visa sticker in your passport, you still have 180 days to go to Mexico and finalize the process. 
Now, once you're ready to go to Mexico, depending on where you go, if you go to Mexico City or Merida or Playa del Carmen, um, there are different procedures there. Some of them are basically walk-ins and so in some others you have to make appointments at the Mexican immigration government. Now, once you go to this appointment in Mexico and you finalize your visa, uh, you're officially getting a residence permit in Mexico and you're able to uh, live there full time or not at all, depending on uh, what your wishes are. So one of the best things about this residence is that there is no physical presence in order to maintain it. So you would actually have to go there uh, only uh, once after a year to renew your residence. And then you would actually have to go again after three years to renew it again and turn it into a permanent residence. So if you want to just have a backup residence uh, option with no obligations to live there uh, or make frequent visits, then Mexico uh, might be a good option to look into. Besides the lack of physical presence requirement, this residence is also very easy to obtain. It's cheap. You don't have to make an investment if you don't choose the real estate route. You don't have to make any donations. You don't have to be there. And most importantly, it, is, uh, it has a great lifestyle and it is close both to the United States and Canada. So if you are from those countries and you want to go somewhere, but not too far, uh, still be able to easily visit your family, then visit you, then uh, Mexico can be a good choice, uh, geographically speaking. Now, while this all sounds easy and very exciting, there are certain obligations and there are certain things that you need to pay attention to in Mexico and that you actually must comply with and uh, definitely keep track of. So first of all, as I mentioned, you would have to visit Mexico after the first year to renew your residence, then also after three years. And if you're aiming for a passport, uh, you would have to actually spend, you would, it would take you five years to get to that point and you would have to spend 18 months out of the last 24 months in Mexico in order to be eligible for a passport. In addition to that, you would also need to show proof that you know Spanish, that you know their history, that you are integrated in their culture. You would get a test basically to pass on their history and culture. And only after that, they would approve uh, the passport uh, for you. The good thing for retirees is that after you turn 60 years uh, of age, you do not have to pass these tests. However, you still have to show proof that you know some Spanish to an extent that you can communicate on a daily basis. However, these other requirements would not be needed at that point. One of the things that Mexico um, recently introduced is that any person who is 18 years of age or older will actually have to apply for a tax ID number in Mexico as well, and it is mandatory that you have it. So after you apply for your residence, after you get it, you also have to apply for this tax ID number, which will not make you a tax resident immediately. It is just mandatory to have it from the resident standpoint of view. So if you're considering obtaining this residence as a plan B, plan A, you want to live there, or you just want to have it, but you're not sure where to start. Here at Nomad Capitalist, we helped a lot of people get their Mexican residence uh, quickly and easily. So if you're somebody who's looking into obtaining this uh, type of residence, whether as a plan B or a plan A, whether you want to live there or just have it as a backup, um, then that's definitely something we can uh, help you with and we can point you in the right direction and make the process uh, easier for you.